Initiate Vigilante Mode. Getting some things together and you know, just resting a little bit. Happy New Year. Uh, let's like catch up a little bit. I got accepted to a film festival. Uh, let's just hold a little bit on like too much excitement. I applied to like five or six or seven at this point, maybe even eight uh, individual film festivals through Without a Box. Other filmmakers can check it out. It's a really great resource when uh, trying to apply to like a bulk of festivals because it can become expensive and it's also. It's like an aggregator for all of them. Anyway, it's really great. I, one of them is the London Independent Film Festival, and I have been uh, selected for what's called their like official selection. So this is sort of like the first round. So you know whether I go forward or whether it gets um, you know through like the actual awards phase, uh, we'll have to see. Like fingers crossed. I'm like really excited about it, but I'm also really scared. So please keep supporting the film, uh, and you know once again thank you to everybody who worked on it. Um, it just goes to show that, like, I guess our work really did have some impact, so, like, thanks, guys. Now, the Golden Globes was last week, I feel like, in our culture. You know, if it happened yesterday, it's no longer relevant, but uh, I just wanted to sort of weigh in on a couple of things that I have sort of here on my card. First was just, like, sort of the elephant in the room, uh, otherwise known as Casey Affleck. Now, in my opinion, he absolutely deserved to win that award. He was, I think, the best actor of the year, but it just was such a creepy kind of social engagement for him to be there. When Brie Larson uh, handed him the award, I mean, I felt like she had this sort of like look of disdain on her face. Despite the fact that he maybe has done some shady, creepy things in his past, he was the best actor this year. That's for damn sure, especially if you've seen the movie. It's the first thing that comes to mind when I think of the best actor of the year. And then of course there's like that Ryan Reynolds, uh, Andrew Garfield thing. I mean, Okay, uh, of course, there's the Meryl Streep speech, which was really, really fantastic. I'm so glad she, you know, just spoke honestly and just spoke the truth. I really honestly thought that Mar Shirt Mar, okay, I'm gonna really try to say this correctly. Mahershala, I think that's right. Mahershala Ali, I really thought he was snubbed. I thought he should have won that award for Best Supporting Actor uh, for Moonlight. Aaron Taylor Johnson was great in Nocturnal Animals. I just thought Mahershala personally was like the standout performance of the year, it really caught my attention. And I think he'll have a better chance at the Oscars, but we'll, we will have to see. I also thought that Amy Adams was, uh, should have won that award for um, Arrival for Best Actress. Uh, I haven't seen this film, Belle, so I cannot speak to it. Perhaps if I saw, see it, I'd be singing a different tune. Um, but I just personally thought out of all those actors, she really did, you know, blow me away in that film. Such a complex movie and a really complex role, I think, for her. Um, so I just thought that she should have had that. How about Deadpool? Deadpool is having such a great year. I'm actually a little bit surprised. This movie, when I when you really look back on it, if you like rewatch it, it's a really well put together film. Writing-wise, structurally, visually, uh, you know, shot on a kind of moderate budget and came out uh, earning almost a billion dollars, being the highest grossing rated R film. I think it's more than just the brand recognition because honestly, a lot of people don't even really know who Deadpool is still. This is a quality film and it's breaking down some doors for the comic book genre or even science fiction action adventure genre. The Golden Gold nomination for musical comedy, but it's also now been uh, honored uh, or at least acknowledged by the DGA Awards, the Producers Guild Awards, PGA, and the Writers Guild, the WGA. So based on all of that, I'd say this movie fares a pretty good chance at getting nominated for some awards. Am I saying Best Picture? Not necessarily. I think screenplay is almost a sure thing at this point. They can have up to 10 nominations this year. It made my top 10 films and uh, it, it ranked even higher than Captain America Civil War for me. So I would personally include this movie, but we will see what happens soon. Catching up on a few movies that I've gotten a chance to see that um, you know, I just wish I had a chance to review at some certain point, so I'm just gonna sort of combine all of them together right now. La La Land, which I saw uh, last weekend in the cinema, and then they actually sent me my screener. So I was so happy that I was able to just watch it again, because I loved this movie. I am just listening to the soundtrack, like, incessantly. It's my morning commute music. An outstanding movie, and 
I don't know if it means like the musical is coming back or whatever, uh, the Hollywood musical, but it really was such a strong film on so many levels. I think visually, the color palette, the scoring, the music, the performances, the writing, the dialogue, I mean, this was a great film. If I had seen this uh, in 2016, this absolutely would have made my top 10 list. As a matter of fact, it probably would have been number two or maybe even number one. I think what I do kind of like about it more than Moonlight is that there is a bit more of an uplifting feeling for me. It just kind of like reminded me of like why I do this, why I'm acting, why I'm making films and all of this kind of stuff. It was kind of special to me. It really was beautiful. And I thought Emma Stone was phenomenal. I mean, I thought she was great in uh, Birdman, but I think that she outdid herself in this movie. I think, in, a, in my opinion, I think this is her year. I think that category is going to be stuffed. Um, I'm surprised Viola Davis is considered a supporting actor, because I, it, for, in, me, in my mind, she was just the lead actress of that film. And I know that Hidden Figures is also kind of creating a nice little bubble in which I'm happy I haven't seen it yet. But, you know, Octavia Spencer is such a good actress. Uh, Taraji P. Henson, another great actress, and Janelle Monet, who I'm hearing is fantastic in the film, so we'll see what happens there. But La La Land was just phenomenal. If you haven't seen this movie, go see it. You will be humming the songs, you will be thinking about your life and your dreams and all of that. It's fantastic. A+. plus. Next is Jackie. And, and long story short, um, you know, I didn't really like this movie that much. I loved Natalie Portman's performance. She's one of my favorite actors, but I just didn't really enjoy the film. It, I thought I felt it was very flatlined, kind of boring, and it would have been more well served as a mini series or something like that, where you can kind of expand on certain moments. It just didn't really feel like it um, had really much of an engine to it. It was it was very factual, and that was great, and you know it was well shot and and it looked great, but it just didn't really have any like spice to it, with the exception of Natalie Portman. I thought. Um, Sarsgaard, Peter, I thought he was completely miscast as Bobby Kennedy. Probably give that like maybe a C plus, B minus. I do think that Natalie Portman it will get nominated for sure. Sing Street, okay, okay, let me just pause for a second, collect my thoughts. I don't know why it took me so long to see this film, but it's on Netflix, and I've been meaning to watch it, and I finally got a chance to watch it. Wow. It really, really spoke to me. I feel like with the, you know, number of uh, contenders in Best Picture, it could definitely have a, a nomination. I think it deserves one. It, we have like two kind of prominent musical uh, films, uh, even though this one's a little less traditional, but I just loved it. I loved it, the film so much. I love that time period, like the 80s, and I love that like pop punk and the punk scene, uh, rock and roll and all of that. Uh, and, and just the fact that it took place in uh, Ireland also enhanced it for me because it's like locations that I'm not so used to. So I just love watching it on screen. And I just thought like the casting was great. I know that they plucked a lot of those actors out of um, obscurity uh, from an open casting call. And I can't say enough good things about this movie. I love the music in it. Um, and it was such a great, inspiring movie. That theme seems prominent this year, just kind of following your dreams, but I don't feel like that ever really gets old. Once you have to just like do your job and make your money and pay your rent. And you know, what have you let go of? I mean, like when you're young, it's kind of like the only chance you really have. That's what this movie meant to me. And it's just, I'm getting chills thinking about it. I loved it. A plus. Probably more stuff to talk about, you know, comic book movies, uh, you know, DC and uh, Ben Affleck and all the drama with him. And then the Green Lantern Corps movie is now like fast-tracked and there's like a whole bunch of other stuff. January is kind of the dumpster of movies so I'm not really like that excited to see anything this month aside from probably Hidden Figures. Um, but you know, moving into like February and March there are like more exciting movies coming out. Uh, obviously like the Power Rangers and King Kong movie and blah blah blah. We'll catch you up on that uh, coming soon. That's pretty much all I have for today guys. So stay supporting Vigilante Mode Reviews guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, Vigilante Mode, deactivate. <laughs>